Have you ever looked up into the sky at night and seen the Milky Way? Chances are you haven't. Two thirds of people living in the United States can't see the Milky Way with the naked eye because they are affected by light pollution. Human cultures have looked to the stars since the beginning of civilization, using them for calendars, clocks, and navigation. But now we're failing to see countless stars, planets, and galaxies thanks to light pollution. Light pollution is simply misdirected light that goes where it is not needed, such as up into the sky. Light pollution negatively affects the environment, human health, and astronomy. It is a direct result of our industrial and ever-expanding civilization and is considered to be one of the most pervasive and fastest growing types of pollution. There are two main types of light pollution, overillumination and sky glow. Overillumination is excessive and often unnecessary lighting that can come from building exterior and interior lighting or things like billboards, stadiums, and street lights. Overillumination can be a result of leaving lights on when no one is using them, more lights being used than is necessary, especially in workplaces, and poor placement of lights. Sky glow is the orange, yellow, or pink glow effect of light on the sky over populated areas. It is most visibly a problem in high concentration areas, such as the cities of North America and Europe. Sky glow hinders our ability to see the stars in the sky. For example, if you were standing on the observation deck of the Empire State Building, you'd see less than 1% of what people back in the 1700s could see when they looked up into the night sky. Astronomers classify darkness using the Bortle Dark Sky Scale. This scale determines what class an area lies in based on a variety of factors including its star visibility, air glow, and the ability to see the Milky Way. Most people live in classes 5, 6, or 7. New York City falls into class 9, while the Grand Canyon falls into class 2. We actually don't have any class 1 areas left in the continental United States. To see class 1 skies, you would have to travel to places which are generally uninhabitable by people, such as the Australian outback or the mountains of Peru. The effects of light pollution are not always obvious, but there are lasting, adverse effects that are damaging to both our environment and ourselves. Light pollution alters light levels and light rhythms to which many forms of life have adapted. Migrating birds, for example, are often confused by artificial lights. They are attracted to lights on tall towers and brightly lit buildings and become disoriented. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that anywhere between 5 and 50 million birds are killed each year from collisions with communication towers. Estimates of the total number of bird deaths from light pollution caused collisions each year range from 98 million to 1 billion. FLAP, the Fatal Light Awareness Program, is trying to reduce this number by working with building owners on improving existing lighting and encouraging them to reduce light during migration periods. Sea turtle hatchlings in Florida have instinctively moved away from the dark silhouette of the land and towards the bright horizon, which has historically been the light reflection of the moon and stars on the ocean surface. Now, however, they move towards the brighter lights of streets and buildings where they often die of dehydration, are attacked by predators, or run over by cars. In addition, lighting beaches at night discourages female sea turtles returning to the beach for nesting. Insects, like moths, are especially prone to light fatalities. Artificial light causes paralyzing attraction that reduces their ability to navigate and deters them from feeding and mating, which makes them easier prey. Researchers have cited light pollution as the reason for the sharp decline in the population of North American moths. This ecological trap occurs when an environment has changed faster than the animal life can adapt to it. Many other animals are affected by light pollution too. Frogs, when exposed to light at night, reduce their mating calls, limiting their reproductive potential. Bats change their feeding behavior. Nocturnal animals, which include 80% of marsupials, 20% of primates, and almost all small rodents, are the most at risk. We are just now beginning to understand these creatures, while at the same time, we are jeopardizing their habitat and survival. Additionally, energy waste from light pollution is also an environmental concern. Light-produced waste can come from inefficient lighting that requires an abnormal amount of individual lights, excessively high wattages, or simply having lights on during the day when there is sufficient natural lighting. 
In the U.S. alone, approximately 2 million barrels of oil are wasted every day because of unnecessary lighting. 7% of total U.S. energy waste is attributed to lighting. The most obvious way light pollution affects human health is over-illumination in the workplace, which can cause eye strain, headaches, and increased stress. But exposure to light at night has also been linked to rising levels of breast cancer in women. As prevalence of breast cancer is greatest in industrialized regions, exposure to light at night has been proposed as a probable cause. This theory is supported by the scientific observations of decreased breast cancer in blind women and increased breast cancer in women who work at night. Melatonin is the body's chief cancer-fighting agent. When exposed to artificial light at night, the normal nocturnal production of melatonin is suppressed. Therefore, the cancer cells that are awake during the day and are normally inactivated by melatonin at night instead become insomniacs and stimulate cancerous tumor growth. According to one study, women living in neighborhoods where it was bright enough to read a book outside at midnight had a 73% higher risk of developing breast cancer than those residing in areas with the least outdoor artificial lighting. The study of space has been greatly affected by light pollution because they simply cannot see anything. Skyglow reduces the contrast between stars and the sky itself. Telescopes must be built in increasingly remote areas. When we talk about preserving the environment, it's not usually the sky we mean, but for astronomers at this renowned observatory in France, they're seeking to do just that. They're launching a campaign to reduce light pollution from nearby cities and create a dark sky reserve around their site in the Pyrenees. On a clear day, the entire mountain range is visible from the Pic du Midi Observatory, located 125 miles southwest of Toulouse. But astronomer Sébastien Vauclair explains how the light from the sky prevents them getting a good look at the heavens. The problem is pretty simple. When we look towards Toulouse from here, we see lights from the city. If up here at 3,000 meters we see the city lights, that means they are pointing upward. We do not want that. We want them to point downwards. When they are pointing upward, that means they are lighting the sky and preventing us from seeing it. And also that a lot of electricity is being wasted at taxpayers' expense. Donc ça coûte aussi de l'argent aux contribuables en gaspillage. Fortunately, light pollution is one of the easiest and cheapest pollution problems we can fix. We can improve our current light fixtures by directing light only where it is needed and using light only when it is needed. This is an example of common unshielded lighting. And this is good shielded lighting without wasted light being released into the sky. Here are some more examples of poor lighting designs. If the globe lights look familiar, that's because they are found everywhere on the Western campus. Good lighting design, according to the International Dark Sky Association, should have no light emitted above a horizontal plane running through the lowest part of the fixture. This way, no light is released upwards into the night sky. Another good option is motion sensor lights. These only turn on when it is absolutely necessary, thus decreasing over-illumination, energy waste, and artificial light's negative effect on wildlife. Light pollution has an average yearly growth rate as large as 5 to 10 percent in both the U.S. and Europe. According to the International Dark Sky Association, the loss of the dark, star-filled sky is of tragic consequence for the environment and for the human soul, akin to the loss of our forested landscapes and other natural treasures. But light pollution can be easily solved. All over the world, cities and countries are taking steps to change their outdoor lighting designs and preserve the night sky. Canada has a number of dark sky preserves. Flagstaff, Arizona was recently proclaimed the first ever dark sky city by the International Dark Sky Association for taking steps to reduce light pollution, including enforcing strict outdoor lighting ordinances. Belgium has an annual National Light Pollution Awareness Day. In 2002, the Czech Republic passed a national law to eliminate light pollution. In Italy, Rome has decided to relamp 100,000 lights by 2010 in order to reduce light pollution and save energy.